How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Tech Block video. It's a sick intro today with uh, bicep curls. Got to get a nice pump going before we actually begin the PC build. So I've just gone ahead and put together a new gaming PC, but now my desktop is being plagued by the iconic Activate Windows watermark. Luckily though, today's video is being sponsored by VIPSCDKey.com, a website where you can purchase Microsoft Office, Windows 10, and in my case, Windows 11 license keys. I ended up picking up Windows 11 Pro right here, and of course, using code TECHBLOCK for 25% off of my own order. They have a bunch of payment methods that they accept, including PayPal, and they make the whole ordering process very, very simple. It literally took me less than five minutes from purchasing it to having Windows be activated, which is pretty damn good. You get the license key sent to you via your email and you can also access the full key at any time on the actual website where you purchase the key from. You can copy the key right there, bada bing bada boom, copy paste and within moments, Windows will be activated and you will no longer have to suffer with the Activate Windows watermark in the corner of your display. Massive shout out to VIPSEDKey.com once again for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys use code TECHBLOCK for an additional 25% off your order. All their links will be at the very top of today's video description down below. Thank you for listening and back to today's regularly scheduled programming. We got uh, some motherboards in from ASRock today. We got an X570 Tai Chi Razer Edition. All right, that is one of them. That is the one we're gonna be uh, using today because I don't have an Intel CPU just yet and I don't have DDR5 RAM either for this other board that looks very similar to the X570 one. ASRock hooked it up with two motherboards. So basically I'm still on AMD right now over on my main system, which is behind me over there. We got a 3950X CPU inside of an MSI godlike X570 motherboard. But I suspect that something in my system like hardware wise might be damaged in some way because we still blue screen <laughs> way too often dude i think every single day i uh, still blue screen at least once the blue screens you can't escape them all right they just they keep coming back to haunt me but the motherboard has not been replaced just yet so we're gonna try replace the motherboard for this bad boy razor edition we'll just like swap all the components over onto this board make a sick montage and Fingers crossed. No more blue screens? Maybe? We'll see. Because if this don't fix it, I can either try a different graphics card or perhaps different RAM. Because I've already replaced the CPU. The liquid cooler has been replaced. Every fan, the PC case has been replaced. The power supply has been replaced. All of the storage drives have also been replaced. But I'm pretty sure it has to be hardware related. Because like, even after I reinstall Windows, the blue screens, they still come back. So we're on a mission to slowly get to the bottom of this. Yeah, shout out to Azrock for sending this thing over. Let's get this thing opened up, dude. All right, so we got Maximize Your Device with Razer Synapse 3. This motherboard, I guess, will actually appear on Razer Synapse. I've never had a Razer motherboard before, so we're gonna see how this works. Now, what is gonna be interesting is I already have Razer's Chroma ARGB controller and also their PWM fan hub, which are like separate little components you can buy for your own PC build to either plug in the RGB devices in your PC and control it through Razer Synapse and or you can also pick up the fan hub and plug in the actual fans into a special Razer fan hub then you can have like per fan control of like the actual fan speeds through also Razer Synapse. So this motherboard here should actually come with the ARGB controller that is like a separate piece of my PC but it should already be a part of this board as far as I know and uh, it'll be interesting to see what else we get through Razer Synapse 3 in terms of control, like fan control, will that be a thing? We'll see, all right, this is all kind of new to me as well. Okay, so that's, that's the actual motherboard out. Okay, so I'm guessing this will be like, yeah, documentation and over in the other section, we got some cables. You even get a screwdriver that comes with the actual motherboard. Now, I don't know what kind of head it actually uses. I think it might be like a T10. So this special screwdriver is to remove the like plating on top of the actual M.2 drives. Basically the heat sinks that are sitting on top of the M.2 storage areas. Yeah, so you could slot your M.2 drive right there and uh, it even comes with some thermal pads pre-applied onto the actual metal bit right here to keep your M.2 drive nice and cool. It says uh, for gamers by gamers in like this cool pattern that we've seen before on like some of Razer's keyboards. Hopefully you can just barely see it there. Yeah, it's actually a pretty sick like 
backplate design for the motherboard at the back. That, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. It's a nice touch. You know, in terms of connectivity, this board is actually better than I expected. Here is the rear I.O. We got a bunch of USB ports. We get 2.5 gigabit ethernet we also get clear cmos and bios reset buttons right at the back at the bottom of the actual board we, there's a reset switch power switch as well as the motherboard code led screen right there we have a bunch of sata ports of course front panel connectors uh two usb3 connectors as well one of them is angled one of them is like facing upwards 24 pin of course a bunch of areas to plug your fans in as well one important thing to mention of course after all this is the razor edition motherboard is the actual rgb and the rgb connectivity on the motherboard itself so every single led that you actually see on the board whether it's the light strip here the rgb around the chipset area or the razor edition and a bit of rgb lighting there is individually addressable every single led can be set to its own individual color of your own choosing through of course the Razer Synapse software and then for the actual external RGB connectivity we get dual RGB connectors one at the top one at the bottom those are of course the four pin 12 volt RGB headers and then of course we also get addressable RGB connectivity as well in the form of three pin five volt headers one here and then one at the top and with that said let's get this thing built motherboard if it didn't have like a razor chroma background for the whole bios are you joking <laughs> so all my ram has been detected which is nice the cpu has been detected clearly the graphics card is working as well i've gone ahead and set everything to the color green check this out this is the finished pc build with the razor edition motherboard installed let me go over some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like about it. In terms of the actual design of the board, I think it's really sleek looking. In this case, with the components I have inside of here right now, I reckon it looks absolutely spot on. It just works really well. If you mount your graphics card and plug it into the first like PCIe slot right there, then you, you don't really see any of this section. So ideally, you'd want to actually vertically mount your graphics card. And then obviously when you'd be like peeking into the PC, from above, you would see the actual like, you know, absolutely insane RGB area over there. But obviously not a major thing, like most motherboards have a bunch of lights there and you, they pretty much always get covered up by a graphics card if it's just plugged directly into the top slot. But just something I thought I'd mention, after all this is like a board really focused on LED lighting, RGB, it's Razer after all, why wouldn't it be? Now, you might have noticed one thing about the PC build that is a bit different than usual. Why are the LED lights on your graphics card disabled? What's up with that, dude? Well, unfortunately, the Razer Synapse software and the way you control the RGB lights on this board, something is like, something's gone wrong, okay? In terms of like, syncing up MSI Mystic Light, G-Skill Trident Z memory through Razer Synapse simultaneously, on this motherboard specifically, at least for me, I cannot sync up G-Skill and MSI Mystic Lite to Razer at the same time. If I install MSI Mystic Lite, the moment it's running in the background, it will absolutely overwrite the G-Skill RGB lighting software for some reason. And I've tried messing around with MSI Mystic Lite settings. I've tried Dragon Center, MSI Center. I tried installing just MSI Mystic Lite, like, like the super old app, that didn't even work but I've tried everything and no matter what I tried, I could not get the G-Skill Trident Z software and MSI Mystic Lite to play nice with each other on this motherboard. I don't know why. It's as if like MSI Center or just any MSI Mystic Lite software was overriding the G-Skill software. 
and they were conflicting all the time. I could not have both running at the same time. I tried reinstalling the software countless times and nothing I did fixed it. So in the end, I ended up downloading Signal RGB. Very good app, would highly recommend it. You can basically control a ton of RGB devices from different manufacturers all through one app, which is pretty damn sick. You can sync up tons of different RGB peripherals, PC components, light strips, all through one software. It's pretty sick, dude. I'll leave uh, their link in the description down below. Not sponsored or anything, just a good bit of software. I would recommend it works for me. And uh, chances are many of you also have a bunch of different components from different manufacturers. And maybe you want an easy way through one app to sync up all the lights. And for this one, you can do it, which is, which is very nice. But I ended up just simply using this app to turn the lights off on the RTX 3090 from MSI so that if I were to do like a spectrum cycle, as you see right now, everything works and everything can sync up, including the RAM minus the graphics card. Because, you know, it's, it, it's either I sync up the RAM or I sync up the graphics card. And in this case, I just went with the RAM. Another thing to watch out for as well. Say you have the XPG RGB M.2 SSD that I have installed in my PC right now. I've ended up disabling the RGB lights on the SSD because you cannot sync the lights on that SSD with this motherboard, at least not through Razer Synapse, which is the primary way you control every other LED on the motherboard, whether it's the actual LEDs on the board itself or any three pin, five volt RGB device you plug into the motherboard ports, you will get full like per LED control, which is awesome. And as you can see, there are two more icons right here. If you plug in a 12 volt four pin RGB device, you will also be able to control it directly through Razer Synapse, which is great, fantastic. Like in terms of RGB implementation control of this sort, really good, very well thought of. Not many people actually give you per LED control. So the way they did everything here, fantastic, really, really good. But when it comes to an RGB M.2 SSD, Razer Synapse, does not detect it as a device, which is a bit annoying. You can't really sync the lights up with it. If I was probably using a different ASRock board, I'm assuming it would sync up fine. But through this one, yeah, your RGB M.2 SSD, you can't control the lights, not through Razer Synapse. A bit weird. Another thing, typically through motherboard RGB software, you can control the RAM as well natively, right? If you plug in RAM into your motherboard through either ASRock Polychrome Sync or ASUS Aura Sync or like MSI Mystic Lite, you can control the RAM directly through MSI Mystic Lite. You know, all these other motherboard RGB softwares can instantly control the RAM. You don't need to download like third-party RAM software like in this case. But here, you have to get G-Skill Trident Z software installed and then sync it up through the Razer Connect software in order to actually have control of the RAM and sync it up to Razer Synapse. It really would have been sick just to be able to control the RAM directly through like Razer Synapse, especially if you'd even get like per LED control, imagine, imagine that. If you'd get per LED control of like the actual RAM sticks, that would have been so cool. But yeah, you can't do that and your RGB M.2 SSD can't do that either. But apart from that, very good motherboard, all right? Apart from those, those minor issues regarding RGB lights, it's a sick board. Uh, you get some software called ASRock A tuning, which can give you basic like overclocking tweaking that you can do on the motherboard, like a, a couple of voltages you can adjust and you can also overclock the um, base clock and CPU frequency directly through this app. You also get the system info tab that gives you basic readouts on temperatures, simple stuff like that. There's also operation mode which I've just set mine to performance mode. There's fantastic tuning. You get fan curve adjustment through the software, which is very easy to use and very easy to adjust like any of the actual um, like curves of the fan speed you're trying to set up. Whether you want the thing to be linked to motherboard temp or CPU temp can also be swapped here, which is handy. And there's also the um, chipset fan that you can also adjust the fan speed of. Now, it would have been cool to see this whole fantastic tuning be directly implemented into Razer Synapse as well, as we've seen through the ARGB integration, the Razer Chroma integration through the motherboard and Razer Synapse being very seamless. It would have been also cool to see 
this same fantastic tuning being implemented from the ASRock software directly into Synapse. So any fan you plug into the motherboard, you can then adjust the fan curves through Razer Synapse, similar to what I can do through my Razer PWM PC fan controller, which is a separate device. Yeah, we can pretty much just set up like very simple fan curves. And it would have been cool to get this same functionality through the motherboard. You know, you got customized lighting and then it would have been nice to see something for like cooling or fans as well as like a third tab. But maybe, maybe in the Z690 Razer Edition motherboard, we will see a couple of these improvements or a couple of these missing features you could say, being directly implemented into Razer Synapse. But apart from that, that's been today's video about this Razer Edition motherboard. Overall, it's a pretty good board with just a couple of little weird quirks about it. If you already have a ton of Razer gear and you kind of want to take your Razer PC build to another level, you could pick up the Razer Edition ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard if you're on the AMD platform, or if you're over on Intel, you could pick up the Z690 Tai Chi, which I'm gonna be dropping a video about very, very soon, because I'm, I'm switching to Intel and DDR5. At the start of the video, I said the CPU had not arrived yet, nor, nor had the RAM, but I can confirm, we have the new Intel i9-12900K. Oh my lord, shout out to Intel for sending that out. And we have some DDR5 RAM as well. So stay tuned for another video dropping soon where we switch to Intel and we switch to DDR5. I'll let you know my experience going from AMD to Intel over the next couple of days, couple of weeks. I'm excited. I've been on AMD for several years now after being on Intel for many years before that. Gonna switch over to Intel for the next little while, see how that goes. I have heard that that Intel CPU does like to run a little bit warm. So I might even uh, upgrade the liquid cooler to something a little bit more beefy that can hopefully handle the temperatures with ease of that very powerful Intel i9. But apart from that, I'm gonna wrap today's video up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another one soon. Goodbye. <laughs>